We've recently talked about Warhaven on the channel before, and how we absolutely loved the look of it from the gameplay and trailers, even if it isn't something we normally do here. Well, there is currently a playtest going on, so you know we had to jump in and try it out for ourselves and see what's up. So in this one, we're going to go over all of the things we wish we knew before jumping in, so you don't waste your time and you can go straight in-game with an advantage. So if you do enjoy our videos, definitely show support by clicking like because it really does help us out, and subscribe for all the future content we have planned for you guys over the next few days and weeks. Comment down below what your favourite medieval fantasy fighting game is, there's a few different options to pick, so I'm interested to see what you guys are playing in the comments down below. So first thing is first, let's start it off by talking about the different game modes and how you can play them in order to win the match. The games will be 16 versus 16, so you will encounter enemy players and friendly players throughout the match, and it goes without saying in multiplayer fighting games like this one, that fighting multiple enemies at one time while alone or outnumbered is a surefire and fast way to get defeated and for your team to be pushed back. So team play or squad play is going to be needed within the game. Luckily the game itself does have a squad system, which will even dictate where you respawn, who you can spawn on, and the actual markers that you can place within the match themselves. So be prepared to squad up with randoms or friends as team play is a core part of a 16 versus 16 player battle like this one. Within the game itself though, there are three modes, Onslaught, Skirmish and Arms Race. Within Onslaught, both you and the enemy team will have a score of military strength, as well as a variety of strongholds across the map which acts as objectives to capture for your team. Your team's military strength will gradually deplete and go down if you hold fewer footholds than your enemy team. So within a match you're going to be constantly fighting to secure these objectives to give your team the majority of the map control and thus draining the enemy's strength in order to win the match. Each team will start with 3 strongholds and there's a total of 8 on the map. The centre 2 footholds will start as neutral and this will be the focus point at the beginning of a match that both teams will battle to take. To claim a foothold you will need to control the area around it as you or your teammate raises a flag to control it. You will be vulnerable when raising this flag so having teams back you up or backing up someone else that's doing it is going to be vital. Within the match the battlefield will have a front line and this will move depending on who has the majority of control and where they have it. So from the beginning of a match if you claim both points in the centre then that will actually move the front line forwards towards your enemy's next footholds for you to capture. You cannot capture footholds outside of this front line area as they are locked and furthermore going outside of the front line will be the enemy's territory and further back in your base will be your allied territory. If you go into the enemy's territory, which is shown by this big red wall, then not only will your vision be obscured, but you're also going to take damage over time until you die. So you do not want to go too deep into enemy territory. You want to stay in the frontline area and capture the footholds there, and while flanking is definitely a strategic move, you don't want to flank too far into enemy territory, or you are going to die. When a team's military strength has depleted down to 1, while they still have their last foothold, or while they're capturing an enemy's foothold, they're going to enter last stand mode. In this mode, they will not lose any more military strength and can try to recapture footholds to try and have one final push for victory. You can stop them in last stand mode by contesting their captures and defeating them in order to win the match. For skirmish you'll be battling to control footholds again, however this time there's only going to be three and only one of them will matter for the score. Military strength will still deplete based on one foothold, so expect lots of fights with lots of players all at once. Within skirmish there's going to be three different types of footholds, R, C and A. The foothold A is the central point on the map, and this is the only foothold that matters for depleting the enemy's military strength, so this is your main objective and focus. This time it can just be captured by standing in the area around the flag, and this is where a majority of fights will happen. However, footholds R and C are also capturable, but this time by raising a flag. Foothold R will provide a forward respawn point for the team controlling it, so having access to this foothold will make holding the center foothold much more easy. However, if you control foothold C, this will grant you a massive cannon to shoot over the main objective A. This will provide huge AoE damage and support to the rest of your team, and makes a huge difference when capturing that point. Within skirmish, if you go down to 1 military strength, you will enter last stand mode as long as a player within your team is in the central foothold area of A. This gives you a chance to win as long as you are alive and within the capture area. Finally, there is arms race. This will see you capture footholds which will activate war machines for your team to escort to the enemy stronghold. If your team is not near 
near the machine, it will start to retreat back to its origin point. The enemy team can also temporarily disable these machines by jumping on top of them and interacting with them for a set timer. On top of this, the battle itself will also have a timer which will elevate the escort level of the match. This will change and increase the pace of the match as time goes on. At escort level 3, the war machines will push forward even without allies near them, and at level 4, the machines will advance even if the enemies are nearby trying to push it back. You're going to use these machines to reach the enemy base, to destroy all of their totems, and that is how you win the match. So, now that you know the game modes and how to win, let's go over some basics of combat, the different soldiers, and the immortals. Within the game itself, you can pick from five different soldier types. Think of these as classes that each play differently with different abilities and playstyles. Depending on your playstyle, you'll find varying success or difficulty with each one. They can be leveled up with a resource you get by playing, so it's worth experimenting to see which one works for you before focusing in on one and leveling up that one first. Generally, the Blade Soldier is a good all-round starter, and I would advise you start here if it's your first time playing. The Spike is also good for its long range on its pike, while the Arc is your classic archer type soldier, but make sure to stay away from melee combat when you're playing it. The Guardian will be great for holding a point and disrupting enemy attacks, while the Warhammer, my personal favourite, is great for doing large AoE damage around you, but is slower because of this. Finally, the Smoke Soldier is your classic support healer role and is always good to have on the team. When attacking enemies, you can swing up, down, left or right, so depending on your surroundings, you will need to mix up your attacks, otherwise you're going to bounce off of walls and objects. So definitely pay attention to your timings, when to attack, when to block, when to advance or retreat. After playing in the match for long enough, you will build up your Immortal Gauge. Once full, you can transform into one of four Immortals for a short duration of time. These Immortals are extremely powerful compared to regular soldiers, and are generally best used to clear multiple enemies at once, or to secure a point for your team. The Martyr Immortal is great for fast attacks and countering, absolutely fantastic for holding a point. The Raven is good for AoE range damage and backing up your team. The Hoat, or I think that's how you say it, is a powerful support who can not only use barriers on yourself and teammates, but also resurrect them. And finally, the Dark Gale is a cavalry mounted unit on horseback with fast movement and AoE attacks around him. This one's great for clearing a large open area. Picking the right one for the situation at hand is important, so experiment with them as you play and you'll start to realise when to pick each one, as well as their strengths and weaknesses. Let's go on to some tips, because before going into battle you're definitely going to want to check the challenges tab. There will be daily and weekly challenges that will reward you with XP for doing specific tasks, so it's always worth checking them and trying to finish them once you go into a match. You can then use this XP to advance your world pass to get resources, items for your character and profile banner, as well as skins, so it's always worth getting those XP from the challenges. On top of this, each soldier will actually have skins that will unlock that make them look way cooler than their default skins, but this will require certain challenges to unlock them, and some of them are quite simple like getting kills or assists. The only downside is you will have to play a lot to finish them, but you do look a lot cooler with these skins. So again, focusing on one particular class that you like and do well with will mean you get those cooler skins faster. Another thing to pay attention to within the maps are things like ballista, cannons, and other stationary devices that no one else is using. These deal huge damage and make a massive difference in securing an area for your team, so keep an eye out for them. And I want to emphasize as before, blocking is your friend in combat. Don't just spam attacking. A well-timed block will give you the opening to hit an enemy, so never spam, look for timings, and go for the attacks when the opportunities are there. If you have any other tips you would like to share to new players to Warhaven, put them in the comments down below and we can all learn together as a community. If you did find this video helpful though, definitely show support by clicking like because it really does help us, and subscribe and click the bell so you're kept up to date with all of our content that we have releasing for you guys every single day. There are two more videos on screen now that you may really enjoy if you enjoyed this one. So if you did enjoy this video, definitely check them out on the screen and then tell us what you think after watching them in the comments down below.